insignificance relates to one's situation. For everything has significance, whether it is to you at that time, some other time, or even to someone else. For Charlotte, the small wool shop in the centre of town provided her with her sense of purpose. It was two years ago when Charlotte, after watching a particularly dreary episode of Children in Need, decided to carefully consider every aspect of her lifestyle, making it completely selfless. She became benevolent to such a degree that she began to view the world with everything in it as almost utterly helpless. Peculiar acts of compassion gave Charlotte a sense of satisfaction unbeknown to anyone else. Every day, a new endeavor to value life, even in its most despondent form. Knitting blankets for the homeless was an act of kindness Charlotte inherited from her mother. It was one she particularly enjoyed. Unfortunately, Charlotte's father, a doctor at the local surgery, soon realized he was allergic to the fibers in the wool. <coughs> Bless you. Charlotte, concerned for her father, avoids storing large quantities of wool at home. Instead, she buys one yarn a day from the wool shop after school. Anne is the wool shop's one and only employee. She wears off-white linen Clark slip-ons, a quartz brown leather watch strap, a British Home Store's beige cotton cardigan, and Boots optician glasses. The shop is Anne's life, and she easily fills her day with requisite tasks. For example, emptying every section of shelving to clean it, restock, and align the projecting wool. Analyzing old stock to decide if it is worthy of the bargain bin, and polishing the buttons individually. It is a routine Anne has followed since she was 20, and now in her 30s she still holds no complaints. For Charlotte, Anne's dedication is a comfort to her own daily routine. The day the shop was closed for the first time in 10 years, Charlotte felt disheartened. This crack in Charlotte's everyday routine caused her mind to wander into a fretful train of thought. Was Anne locked in the cupboard? Electrocuted? Hit by a plane? Charlotte cannot focus. Without being able to knit a new blanket, she feels not only guilty, but also concerned for Anne. It is too much for her young mind. The next day, in an attempt to reconcile the events of the day before, Charlotte visits the wool shop. How come the shop was closed yesterday? I had a day off. Did you do anything nice? No, just housework mostly. Be shutting ever again? I haven't uh, planned to. She did not need to ask anymore. Content with Anne's response, Charlotte could continue to replenish her stock of wool. Could you help me get that one up there, please? Charlotte always enjoyed buying the wool, which was out of reach of other customers. This way, it was germ-free and somewhat softer than those in the lower shelves.
However, it was the small, sterile-looking jar, sat out of place on the counter, which distracted Charlotte from this pleasure. For a brief moment, Charlotte became wholly this occupied one? by the alien word written on its label. Yes, please. Darling. What does hydroxyurea mean? Gosh, that's a big word. Wherever did you hear that? At school today. Really? Well, it's a type of medicine that treats an illness. One that can make you feel really quite poorly for quite a long time. Yes. Charlotte's memory unravelled like a reel of film in her head. She saw Anne every day and had not even once considered that she might not be well. For the first time in her life, Charlotte felt like she had failed. The next day, Charlotte did not visit the wool shop. Anne locked up as usual and made her way home. Anne's mind was a tired place. As she walked, she planned what she needed to pack for the hospital in the morning, what time she would wake up, what she would eat for dinner tonight, and what time she would go to bed. However, this evening as Anne arrived home, her thought process was diverted elsewhere. I used to think that all my debts would go away If I hit my head and say the painful rainy day But things are good and things get bad and that's the truth You play the game of face and not so funny spoon Go ahead and break my heart. I like to think I'm dead, but I've been dead from the start. Anne was touched. It was a sight that painted over the greyness of her mundane life. A comforting aid memoir that not every day was going to be the same. If I hit my head and say the painful rainy day, but things are good and things get bad, and that's the truth. You play the game of face, and not so funny spoon. Go ahead and break my heart. Anne never found out who was responsible for the touch of kindness she received that day. Charlotte liked to keep it that way. 